DuPont presents the Cavalcade of America. Ladies and gentlemen, the Cavalcade of America, sponsored by DuPont, maker of better things for better living through chemistry, presents Eagle's Nest, a story of Garibaldi, the great Italian liberator. Written by Conrad Bercovici and made into a radio play by Arthur Miller. Tonight, Paul Muni will portray two roles. Garibaldi, fighter for Italian freedom, and Alberto Liguri, who embodies the spirit of Garibaldi in modern Italy. DuPont presents Paul Muni on The Cavalcade of America. That is Garibaldi's song. It is not heard in Italy today. We hope it will be heard again soon. We wish these words could be heard there tonight. Because I have a letter in my hand, written by Garibaldi to an American. It has never been published. On November 13th, 1866, Garibaldi sat in Caprera and wrote this to Americans. These are his words. The sympathy which comes to me from free men, citizens of a great nation like yourselves, gives me courage for my task in the cause of liberty and progress. I regard the American people as the sole arbiter of questions of humanity amid the universal thraldom of the soul and the intellect. Please express these, my sentiments, to your countrymen. And believe me, yours for life, Giuseppe Garibaldi. So you see, America has a right to speak to Italy. Garibaldi bequeathed to us that privilege. Tonight, the voice of Garibaldi speaks to lovers of liberty everywhere. No Nazi government will tell this story. But we, we will tell it. Listen. Listen, for there are Italians speaking Garibaldi's words this very night. Signor Moreno. Moreno! Eh? Eh? What? Wake up. I told you I was bringing you the prisoner. Oh, yes. I, I just fell asleep a moment ago. I, he, is this the man? This is the man. We caught him signaling with the flashlight to the American planes last night. The penalty for that is death. Sentence him. Stand up straight, you. I... I, I cannot, Herr Colonel. Uh, at least it's very hard for me to sentence this man to death. I, I know him a long time. He, he's an old man. I speak for the German army, Signor Marino. You are the mayor of this city. Sentence him. Herr Colonel... Leave me with him for an hour. I, I want to ask him something. In private, please. The guards are outside the door. They carry good German guns. Good guns, yes. They'll have him right away. Please. Good night. Marino, the parrot spoke last night. The parrot spoke? Liguri, don't lie. Twenty years I've called Benito Mussolini a traitor to Italy. And I swore that only when the people realized it, only then would Giuseppe Garibaldi's parrot speak again. You laughed at me. Old fool. Idiot. <laughs> Last night, the parrot spoke. Not since the day Mussolini came to power has he uttered a sound. As Garibaldi told us, the old ones he told. When another tyrant comes to Italy, he said, even the birds will be silent. This was his plan. Seventy years ago, he gave it to my father. Last night, I took the cage to the window like this. Ligori, please don't touch that cage. And I took the cover off. I, I don't want to hear the bird. Don't uncover it. No Italian has to fear the words of Garibaldi. Or are you a German? Marino, 
Old man, have you no flesh that can burn under a lighted cigar? No bones that can crack? How are you so brave? Let me understand. I that. saw Giuseppe Garibaldi. Listen, Marino. Listen to a voice that reaches back 70 years. Here, I'll uncover the bird. Giuseppe's bird. It never spoke. <coughs> Nobody remembers it speaking. Viva! Viva la tire! Down with the tyrant! On the tomb, my voice, Marino. Don't crash away. Let it cleanse your blood as it did your father's a lifetime ago. The invaders were on us then as they are now, riding our backs like horsemen. Italy was cut into parts like the carcass of some murdered saint. There was no Italy then, only Lombardy or Sicily or Savoy. But one man lived who called himself Italian, Giuseppe Garibaldi. Calling a piece of the earth, it took it. Naming it again with its beautiful name. Drawing the broken parts together like a fire draws the steel. Breathing a nation into life. And they hounded him through the hills for that crime. And a night came in Piedmont nearly a century ago. In a tavern there, the people sat huddled by the fire. Even in those days, the sudden opening of a door sometimes meant death. Run with your talking friend. I'm not a Hun from the north. Innkeeper, some wine for my wife and me. I don't want any trouble, senor. I keep my place open only for local people. Oh, I see. Tell me, do you serve the invaders? Well, naturally, senor, but... Uh... And do you serve the imperial French? Senor, they are hunting a bandit tonight, and I don't want any strangers hanging around. Come, Giuseppe. Leave him alone. You don't want strangers. You only serve local people, and yet you pour wine for strangers. I'm an Italian, and you will serve me. Am I right, good people? The innkeeper didn't mean it that way, senor. Don't get excited. They're hunting a bandit. I know better than you that they're hunting a bandit. Nobody has to tell us they're hunting, senor. Hey, who are you? What are you doing in this district? Yes, what do you want here? I want Italians here. Is there an Italian in this tavern? Is there an Italian here or am I speaking to Mike? You're not speaking to my senior. Don't come around here calling people Mike. And I'm someone I asked for Italian. I am answering. I am Italian. Now, what are you going to do about it? <laughs> That's better. You're angry. Now we have something in common. Listen to me, friend. I will tell you a strange dream of mine. A dream? Imagine a new country, from the Alps to Sicily, through all the ranges of mountains, over every river, bay. Imagine one flag flying. Think of it, friend. A country that builds schools instead of fortresses. A country with one name for all of it. Italy. And all around the world, that name means something tall and fine, instead of something miserable and mean. There's a dream, Italian. What do you think of it? Ah, it's a grand dream, senor. It's the grandest dream I ever heard. Uh, it won't catch rabbits or turn into stew. Dreams cost nothing. And you can't pass them across the bread counter. By the time tomorrow's sun goes up, this dream will be as real as bread. This is the time when a sane man keeps indoors and shuts his mouth. When the invaders go hunting... When the invaders go hunting, all rabbits should crawl into their holes. I am not a rabbit. And no Italian, senor innkeeper. Tonight... An Italian goes out of his house with his life in his hand and his gun in his hand. Tonight he roars back at the wind and makes the sky tremble. Tonight belongs to no man, but only to Italy. Giuseppe, be careful now. Open the door, innkeeper. If it is a foreigner, say you have no room. I will say what I want to say. Senor, God bless you. It's so cold tonight. Let me stand a bit by the fire. No beggars allowed. I'm, I'm afraid of the roads, senor. They're covered with invaders now that the fighting has broke out. Fighting? What, what? what fighting? They say the people 
are really going after them in Fordia. Regular revolution, they say. Who told you? When did it start? Tell me, old man. Why, well, it, it must have started just a little while ago. I was there oh, only ten o'clock. I... Holy man. It's Garibaldi. Garibaldi. Well, Garibaldi. He. Yes. Yes, I'm Garibaldi, and this is my wife. And if you want to save your skin, deliver me to the conqueror. Grab his arms. I'll share the reward with everyone. Yes, yes. yes. go ahead and share the reward. But the whole of it, mind you, the whole of it, share the unutterable curse your children will lay upon you, each of you. Go to your daughters and say, I betrayed Italy. No one raises his hand. Why not? Because you know in your heart that I'm your friend. Well, where do we go? We march on Rome when morning comes. And as we move, all the people will flow like a river behind us. Will you be there when the sun comes up? Horseman. He's coming in here. Garibaldi here. Who wants Garibaldi? My name is Sears. American, senor. I've come to fight with Garibaldi if I can find him before this revolution is over. Italians, do you hear this? They're coming from America to help us. Dare you stand back now? Are you coming, Pepe? I guess I'll come. Pepe and I will be there. Me too. Take yeah. me. Come to my house. I've got two I guns. Good. Good people. Turn your eyes toward Rome. And march! <laughs> She now? She's better, isn't she? I... I couldn't get a doctor. Apparently scared them all out of Rome. Don't go near her. Let her sleep. I told her not to go into battle with me this time. I begged her, Sears. For Rome, she said, I want to fight by your side. Women fighting in an army means there's liberty involved. I believe that. Look. Look how hard her breath is coming. Try to get a doctor again. I've got to go back to the lines. We're surrounded in Rome. Have you called in the 4th Battalion? I have no more battalions to call. Giuseppe. Anita. You're awake. Good, my sweet. Stretch your arms out. Come, throw away this sickness. You need troops. I got strong, Anita. I'll be a thousand men myself. You need troops. You must not lose Rome. I'll hold Rome. Anita. Your hands. Your hands are so cold. You're losing Rome, Giuseppe. I can tell it from your voice. The kings of Europe are throwing their armies at us. I never knew they hated liberty this much. They have us a thousand to one. Giuseppe, look down the street. People, thousands of them, coming toward this building. What could have happened? They're packing the streets like a flood. Giuseppe. Anita. Yes, what? Go to the window. Talk to the people. Ask them to fight. It's their city. They I, must fight for it. I wanted to speak to them, but they have no guns. Let them pick up the guns of the soldiers who fall. Let the women go to the kitchens for knives. The people must be their own soldiers. Tell them you have no more troops. What if they panic and run away? Trust. Trust the people. Oh, Giuseppe. Anita. Sears, come over here. Anita, open your eyes. Anita. She's dead, you said. Dead. Anita, dead. Leave her. Don't look at her now. How can I leave her? She was my conscience. My very eyes. Can you bury your eyes? Oh, Anita, my life. Look to the north. They're shelling the cathedral. Dispatch. Speak before the people break for the hills. The people, how can they know what they've lost? Trust the people, she said. Good. Then we'll address their hearts, Anita and I. And pray God, American, that they'll listen. People of Rome. Italians. Hear me. You're standing on the first piece of liberated earth in Italy. 
With the power of your arms, you have lifted Rome before the nations of the world and called her a free city. In blood, you have written that freedom is possible for Italians just as it was possible for the Americans. No defeat can wrench that from us. This is your Lexington. This is your Valley Forge. I ask you now to go to the gates. You, the women and their daughters. You, the old men and the young. Now you're all soldiers. Go let your anger ring out like the iron bells of Rome. To the gates now. Find the enemies of Italy. Find them. And with your strong right arm, strike them dead. <laughs> are listening to Paul Muni as Garibaldi, the great Italian liberator, on the Cavalcade of America, sponsored by DuPont. Overwhelmed by superior numbers, Garibaldi loses Rome. His army broken, he escapes with the American seers to the back country where he seeks refuge from the pursuing enemy. Through the night, they seek food and shelter. Here's another house. Come on, seers. We'll try this one. Well, this one's well hidden. You'll never find us here. Good evening, friend. I am Garibaldi. Huh? Have you a place for my friend and me just for a few hours? I'm sorry. My, my house is full. You know well enough your house is not full. They're scouring the countryside for me. Let me in. Yours is the last house on the road. The others have all refused. I cannot let you in, senor. I, I cannot. I fight for them. I offer my life for them. Why? Will they ever understand what liberty means? Are they any more than cattle that follows the first wind toward water, forgetting it utterly when for a moment it dies down? Seppard, we've one chance. We'll make for the coast. There are ships leaving for America. Come on. America, yes, America. See how far from Italy a free man must go before he'll find a place to lay his head. Take me there, Sears. We'll rest before we fight again in Italy. prisoners in Rome, and in their own cities, they are slaves. Oh, I frighten you. No, I just wondered why somebody doesn't free them. I tried, my little friend, I tried. They were not ready for freedom. They would not fight hard enough to be free men. Well, why doesn't somebody tell them to fight hard and keep telling them? I'm a little ashamed, Johnny. It's just that to change a man's mind is so hard. But it can be done, Garibaldi. Hmm. Yes? I didn't see you standing there. I... Your face is familiar. As a matter of fact, I hope it will become as familiar to you as your own. I'm Walt Whitney. That's it, of course. I... I'm very happy to meet you, sir. I'm here with a message for you, Signor Garibaldi. And what is the message you have? Oh, it's coming to the state. Yes. We expect it soon? Yes, I see it very clearly. Your name on our side. The American people will know beyond any doubt that the side Garibaldi fights with is the side of liberty. It is curious that you came just now, Walt Whitman. For many months I've been wondering whether my whole life was a mistake. 
with a people of liberty enough to win and keep it and die to hold it for their children. Now, with this war of yours coming, I know that to destroy slavery, a people will actually risk death. I knew that once and lost my faith. For a moment, I lost my faith in defeat. And now it is rekindled again. Now this fact burns in me. I see I must be a soldier again. And I must tell you frankly, I would rather fight the same fight in Italy. In my own home. That is where I'm going. It is in Italy I belong. Italian, I offer you blood and pain and battle. But who follows me follows liberty. In this war, we are arm in arm with the best of the human race. Our hope is the hope of millions. And to Biela, we dare not lose. <laughs> said Marino over 80 years ago with the song of his battle cry. Garibaldi marched through Italy, the enemy fleeing before him through Castelletto, remember, and Gattanara, a glorious victory, and Borgo, Manero. Do not forget that, Marino. On he went on the swelling tide to Palermo in the heart of Sicily. The Garibaldi legions swept across the channel to the province of Calabria on the Italian boot. The gates of Reggio crumbled before them. And there, on a day in November 1860, the Italian nation was born. The Garibaldi thousands swept into it. Naples on the Tyrannian Sea. Remember that, Marino? Remember what Garibaldi said that day? I do. What he says and said lives in every true Italian heart. Italians, he said, you have your freedom. In suffering it was conceived. In blood it was born. I call upon you and the generations that follow you. Do not betray this glorious hour. Keep Italy free. They're coming for me, Marino. Give me one more minute. Tell them to wait a minute. Colonel wants the prisoner before the firing squad. Uh, yes, yes, one more minute. I, I'll bring him right out. One minute. We come in and get him. What do you want to tell me, Liguri? Let me climb out of that window. I'll get away behind the house. They'll hold me for it. They'll kill me. Come with me, then. There's so much work to be done in Italy. In a few days, we blow the railroad bridge by the river. We could use you there. No, I, I'm a coward. I have oh, no strength for it. My blood is water. I'm afraid. No. This is Garibaldi's battle I'm asking you to join. If you could have seen him even once, you'd lay down your life for him. If I could have seen him, but I never did see him. Garibaldi is dead. I cannot fight with a man who's dead 70 years. Germans, they're alive. They can twist a man's arm off. They can shoot and kill. And no dead man can help me when they aim at my eyes. And still he can. Garibaldi's not dead, Marino. Look through that window. Out there across the Mediterranean. Over there in Africa. 300,000 Garibaldis are riding toward us tonight. In iron horses they come this time. Walt Whitman sends them. Lincoln sends them. America sends them to tell us that Garibaldi is not dead. We are Italians, Marino. Not Germans. Rome will be under siege again. Garibaldi will walk the barricades again. With whom will you fight? The battle begins this minute. With whom will you fight? Marino. I will shut my eyes. Yes. Close your fist, old man. It's closed. Try to do it with one blow. Here, I, I lock the door. Go ahead. Hit me. And run as fast as you can. In Garibaldi's name, don't let them catch you before you do your work. With one blow, now. Good night, Signor Marino. Long live Italy!
Thank you, Paul Muni. Ladies and gentlemen, in years of peace, we took this time on the last cavalcade of the year to wish you a happy new year. But tonight we think the only greeting America wants from DuPont is the assurance that chemistry, as one part of American industry, is in their fighting. Out of 87 DuPont plants are pouring at this moment not hundreds, but thousands, yes, thousands of materials in the thousands of tons for victory. These were the DuPont news headlines of 1942. Anthroquinone vat dye colors, production five times that of two years ago. DuPont supplying more than half of all such dyes used in service uniforms. Nitrogen in the form of ammonia flowing night and day to American industry. Nitrogen drawn by chemistry from the air. DuPont cellophane as a protective medium is saving thousands of tons of metal and is protecting many of the emergency rations for our armed forces. Nylon brush bristles for the Navy smash a bottleneck. Outwear Japanese blockaded natural bristles three to one. Rayon toe used as pump packing in war plants lasts two months where the best long fibered flax lasted two weeks. Three-dimensional seeing speeds production in war plants and arsenals. Scientific use of paint gets 100% more usable light from same amount of electricity. Synthetic camphor, vitally needed for wartime plastics and films, breaks Japanese camphor monopoly for all time. DuPont degreasing solvent saves one manufacturer alone 20,000 gallons of naphtha, 650 drums spinning oil, 56,000 pounds sulfonated castor oil, 150,000 pounds of soda ash, 75,000 pounds of soaps, 250 drums of ammonia. Conservation by the ton. DuPont Cordura Rayon Yarn for Army and Air Force tires gives proven greater strength running hot than any other material for tire cords. Nylon takes to the air in parachutes. These were some of the DuPont headlines of 1942. These stories of chemistry at work for victory have been presented in a special booklet which cavalcade listeners may have free by writing to radio section... DuPont, Wilmington, Delaware. We feel no hesitancy in promising you that chemistry will contribute much in this new year that lies ahead to winning the war. We know that chemistry will make its contribution next year because it has made its contribution in this first and hardest year. The headlines of 1942 forecast the headlines of 1943. Chemistry continues its wartime achievements so that DuPont may bring you soon again better things for better living. Through chemistry. Next week, ladies and gentlemen, the Cavalcade of America, sponsored by DuPont, will present Nancy Kelly in Between Them Both, a play of America today, of the young women who fight for victory on the assembly line, and of one redheaded girl in particular. Be with us next week when the Cavalcade of America, sponsored by DuPont, presents Nancy Kelly as Florrie in Between Them Both, a new radio play written especially for Cavalcade by the popular screenwriter Cave and Riper. On tonight's program, the orchestra and original score were under the direction of Don Voorhees. This is Clayton Collier sending best wishes for the new year from DuPont. This program has come to you from New York. This is the National Broadcasting Company.